Now let's go to the war in Ukraine and in particular the city of Mariupol, which Russia occupied last May. Ten months on, it's not clear how many people have been killed or are still missing. The UN estimates 90% of residential buildings were damaged or destroyed and 350,000 people have been forced to leave their homes. Russian state media says the city is now being rebuilt. Well, the BBC can't confirm that, corroborate it independently, because there's no access for the broadcaster to verify it. But my colleague Vitaly Shevchenko from BBC Monitoring has been talking to locals in the area. Vitaly, good to come in. I mean, we should start by saying how difficult it is to get to talk to people directly. How hard did you find it and how long did it take? It took me more than a week because people are afraid. Somebody said, look, uh, I know somebody who got killed because they were involved in volunteering work in Mariupol, working with Ukrainian volunteers. And somebody else uh, lost their job after speaking to the wrong kind of media outlet. So uh, there were very serious limitations in how much detail we get, but you're confident that what you've been told by people gives an accurate picture of... I mean, the, the big thing is that it's hard to square the idea that the UN is saying this city has been decimated with some of the things you've managed to get footage of. Yes, we've seen um, satellite pictures, we've seen various um, video clips provided by people who are still there, and I've spoken to um, some of them. And the picture they have painted is that of a massive rebuilding effort, massively expensive one as well, and also an effort on the part of Russia to assimilate Mariupol into Russia and make it Russia's own. Um, I think we, I hope we can see the pictures. There's a drive through um, which we have, uh, which we're on now. Um, and can you, t I don't know if you can see how much of this you can see, Vitaly, but what can you, we talk through, because it doesn't look like a decimated city. Well, the UN, my ignorance. The UN says that 90% of ah, apartment blocks like decimated um, have been block. damaged or destroyed. Mm. And the, the buildings that are beyond repair, it seems that Russia is pulling them down and building new uh, apartment blocks in, in their place. Uh, the ones that are repairable, they're replacing um, windows and radiators, buses are running again, hospitals, at least some of the hospitals yeah. are working. The ones schools that weren't well. destroyed. The ones that were not destroyed, yeah. the schools as well. So that's, that's how Russia is trying to show that we can rebuild as well as destroy. And yes. coincidentally, this is what Russia did 23 years ago in Grozny uh, after the Second Chechen War. In terms of how Russia is trying to assimilate Mariupol, I've been told that things become much simpler and easier if you get a Russian passport. Right, in Think, what way? Um, if, okay, the, the state, Russian state agencies, they are obviously the main employer yeah. in town at the moment. And so you're not going to get a job unless you've got a Russian, a Russian passport. passport right. That, and also, to be able to travel to Russia, you really need a Russian passport. Which, of course, a lot of people would do, but from that, particularly that part of Ukraine, because they'll have relatives in Russia, uh, they, they, there might be Ukrainians who are travelling back home, things like that. But they do. It's a border that was quite porous. And, and also, it's, it's very difficult to travel to Ukrainian-controlled territory right. now. Yeah. And also, there are persistent rumours that in order to be able to get a Russian pension, you will need a Russian passport. So all this pushes local residents towards becoming parts of Russia in very practical terms. Um, I was very struck by, by one specific example in, in some of the conversations you've had that you mentioned to us when you were briefing us about this, uh, this work you've been doing, Vitaly, and you, you had someone basically saying that actually um, the pensions is going to, are going to be better under the Russian occupation than they were under uh, Ukrainian control. Well, at the moment, um, retired uh, pensioners in Mariupol, they uh, they're able to get two pensions, one from Russia, another one from Ukraine. So that's another... So you're better off under Russian occupation. That, that's the implication. Isn't that's, the, 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 that's the main message that Russia and, is in pushing. In terms of propaganda, it's quite a useful one. Absolutely. And uh, we'll have to remember that the media outlets that are still allowed to operate in Mariupol and are accessible in Mariupol easily, they are pushing a very hard pro-Kremlin agenda. But I've spoken to a, a very popular commentator from Ukraine. He's originally from uh, eastern Ukraine, from yeah. Donetsk, but he's had to, to flee. Uh, he's called Denis Kazansky. 
And I put to him this idea that, look, local residents, some of them are happy to regain this sense of normality yeah. and stability. And, and they seem to be, some of them, happy to be under Russia. And he said, well, a lot of people uh, leave out the point yeah. that it was Russia who did in the first place. And if it destroyed 10, 10 hospitals, is it really expecting to be thanked for rebuilding one? And what about the thousands of people who've been killed?